Hey friends, happy Sunday. Um, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, today is the day. Um, I'm trying to get back at it. Um, hopefully, stupid phone thing, it drives me crazy. Like you need to see all of this space. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I decided to just say F it, get back in it. Uh, this past week, today's Sunday, November 6th, um, this past week has been kind of challenging and I will kind of go into that in a moment. Um, so it wasn't really, it wasn't going to work out. So <clears throat> I mainly wanted to wait to rejoin Weight Watchers with my Groupon. Um, once I knew I was A, in the right mindset and B, had some sort of plan in place as far as food goes. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. So I'm working on it today to make sure everything is in place for this coming week. And so I'm headed to Walmart for some groceries. This isn't going to be a gigantic grocery trip, but it's going to be um, <clears throat> just a few things to get me like started for the week and, and meal prep for the week. Um, when I say started, I just mean started off on like the right foot. Um, this stuff should last the whole week. Um, and then we'll figure out next week when, when we get there. Uh, I figured, you know, might as well take it one week at a time versus trying to plan like a whole month in advance or something crazy. So that is what I'm doing. Um, it is like almost 1.30, 1.15-ish at the moment. And um, I decided to leave the family home. I figured it'd be easier this way. Um, but let me tell you about this past week while I'm chatting with you. So, oh, and really quick, if you're watching this video, there's going to be chattiness in it. Um, it'll probably be slightly long. I apologize if so. Hopefully I don't have any issues uploading it. If so, that sucks. And then I'll have to split it up. But the plan is I'm going to kind of show you what my meal plan is for the week and also some meal prep and you know just kind of talk to you guys about plan so uh to start off yeah let's talk about my week last week so monday was the 31st of october which was halloween um i hope you guys out there who have little ones had fun trick-or-treating and stuff if that's what you guys do um Kaden was super excited to go trick-or-treating um he was optimus prime she's obsessed with superheroes and transformers and um so my gr my grandmother his grandmother my mom surprised him with the costume when we went over her house a few weekends ago and he was so excited originally as a family we were supposed to be batman he was going to be batman i was going to be catwoman and my husband was going to be joker um it kind of got ruined but that's okay i don't mind he was very happy and he was adorable um my parents had a Halloween party uh, the Saturday before Halloween, the 29th, and um, I was a bumblebee and my husband was a beekeeper, and so that was a lot of fun. Everybody liked that costume. I already had the bee costume, and so I was like, what could go along with a, like a bumblebee costume? And I was like, beekeeper! So I got him an actual beekeeper outfit, like uh, top at least. It's like the jacket with the sleeves and the hat and stuff and it was actually cheaper than buying a costume which is so stupid um and i took little bumblebees that i found and glued them all over his outfit so that was a lot of fun so yeah anyway monday was halloween we took Caden around uh where we live the houses are spaced pretty far apart um and so also there's no street lights so there was a good distance of walking which is, I'm not complaining about um, but when you're dragging a three-year-old three-year-old along with you they get tired very quickly because um, they have little legs you know so like uh, that's kind of what happened last year we wind up having to carry him back home in a complete like pitch black dark because he got so tired um, and me and my husband kept alternating who was carrying him because I mean carrying a 30 pound plus child around is hard um this year we were smart and brought the wagon with us 
um, and so if there was gaps between houses, because you know, some people are out, so they're not home to give out candy, so their lights were off, so it took the distance between houses and made it even bigger. Um, so we would have him hop in the wagon and I'd pull him kind of quickly to get to the next house. Um, my husband is in retail. I think I've told you guys that before. So he had to work overnight a lot this week um, to set up Christmas stuff. So that kind of sucks. Um, so we had to kind of rush Halloween trick-or-treating so that my husband could leave and go to work, um, which is fine. So we probably went to like 15 houses. I didn't get, like, I'm not really tempted by any of the candy. Thankfully, he didn't get much chocolate, which is my weakness, as you guys know, and my son loves his chocolate, so any chocolate he did get, not trying to take it from him. I did have a couple pieces of candy, though, over the last, like, few days, um, but nothing crazy like the old me probably would have done, just, like, binged out on a bunch of candy um, and use the excuse of him not being able to eat it. Um, for the most part, he's at a good age where, um, as long as we're watching him, and we know that he's eating it. Uh, he can pretty much eat anything. The only thing I haven't given him yet is gum. Um, but then I was talking to one of my new coworkers that just started, and he was telling me his grandson is three and has been chewing gum since he was like two. And I'm like, what? I could not imagine giving Caden gum. I feel like it would be everywhere. His hair, my car, or where you know wherever we are, that he has it. Or he would just always swallow it. So I can't even, can't even imagine that. But anyways, so Halloween night was fun. Um, Tuesday, I dropped my phone in my coffee. I think it was Tuesday. So I was holding my phone in my hand. And if anybody's wondering, I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Not the newest one that's blowing up in people's pockets and stuff, um, but I have the other one, the Note 5, and I um, had my big cup of coffee, and I was holding my phone because I just hung up with Kevin, and I went to hang up, and it just slipped out of my hand and right into my coffee. Um, so I pulled it out as quickly as possible, and I hurried up and tried to dry it and I was like shaking it to get all the liquid out of it. Um, and it was acting kind of strange. Like the touch screen was acting very weird. So I um, like had it standing upright cause I wanted all the liquid to use like gravity to come out of it. Um, and then the guy I work with actually told me the silica gel packets like you would get in your shoes uh, that's actually what they use in commercial dehumidifiers, like those gel ball thingies. So, um, he said that that would draw the moisture out of anything and to use those. So I'm like, uh, okay, well, do you have any? Cause I don't, and he happened to have two of them. I don't know where he got them from, but he gave me two of them and I put them in a Ziploc bag that we found at work and I put my phone in it and we just kind of left it like that for a while by the time I went to lunch my phone was pretty okay still acting a little wonky like I could use the stylus but like using like the touch screen with my finger wasn't working that well but my phone was functioning and that's all that I was like worried about um technical stuff really didn't like concern me just because I just wanted to make sure I had a phone you know um so I go home for lunch and I'm showing my husband because he'd worked overnight and he was working overnight that night. Um, so he was home. So I was showing him that it worked and he's like, oh, you know, thank God. So I put my phone in my back pocket. Sorry, my hair keeps blowing in my mouth. I put my phone in my pocket and I went back to work. And when I got back to work, I'd use the potty. So I went in there and I went to pull my pants down and I remembered my phone is in my back pocket and if any of you guys ever put your phone in your back pocket, I do it all the time. If you go to the bathroom and pull your pants down, usually your pocket flips upside down and your phone falls out, which I knew was going to happen. So I'm like, oh nope, don't wanna drop my phone. I've already caused enough damage. So I took my phone out of my pocket and put it on the sink and I you know, did my thing and I got up to wash my hands and I washed them and the soap dispenser's on the wall and I uh, went to get some soap and as I brought my hand back down like to go under the water to wash 
Uh, I hit my phone into the sink, into the running water, and it was missing the stylus because I had taken that out because I wanted that area to dry because I know that that's probably where a lot of the moisture was from the coffee. Um, so yeah, a lot of water went in my phone again. Not even like, not even four hours later, I decided to wash my phone. Um, at this point, my phone was toast. It was flashing a green screen. I tried to turn it off immediately because I've heard that, even my husband said that, even the guy I worked with, he like said, when I dropped it in the coffee, they were like, turn it off. You don't want power going through it while you're trying to dry it out. And then, you know, once you think it's dry, then you can turn it back on. So I heard it, but I was trying to turn it back off and it was acting really weird. I was like, what? Like a lot of bad words came out of my mouth. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I cannot believe I just did this. I've never dropped my phone in water or liquid or anything like that before. Like, how have I done this twice in like a four hour time span? Are you freaking like, I was just so mad. Um, and then a few years ago, I dropped my phone, my iPhone, and I cracked the screen. Like the whole screen was shattered. I could still use the phone, but the screen was shattered. And that evening, I think me and my husband went to like Target or something, and he was kind of mad at me because I broke the phone. Um, and I think I dropped that iPhone like six more times that night. And he was like, I was upset and he was upset. And I just, it kept falling out of my hand. I don't know, it was crazy. And that's what like, I kind of felt like I was reliving that. Um, I'm like, oh my God, my husband's gonna kill me. He was already like, annoyed that I dropped it in the coffee. Like he knew I didn't do it on purpose. He was like, are you serious? Like we haven't had these phones that long. We don't have money to buy a phone. We're still paying for the phones. Like what, you know? So I'm like, oh my God. So I turned the phone off. I put it back in the bag with the silica gel things with a napkin. I put it in a Ziploc bag. I sealed it. I put it in my car upright. And I figured, you know, even when it's chilly out, your car is pretty warm from the sun. So I was like, maybe the sunlight and like the warmth will also help. So I stood it up in my cup holder until I left work that day. Um, as I was leaving work, I tried to turn it back on and it just kept flashing like this bright, blinding lime green screen. And I was like, I've never seen that before. That can't be good. Like, is that like a blue screen on your computer, you know? Um, so I, I was like, oh my God. Well, then I realized my phone was actually like at 0%. So I don't know if dropping it or something, drain the battery or what, but so I turned it back off. We went home. I told my husband what I did. I was like, please don't be mad at me. Please understand that obviously it was not intentional that I did this and please keep your smart comments to yourself. And he just kind of shook his head like, are you serious? Um, so I just, uh, at that point, I put my phone in a bag of rice with the silica gel packets to let it further dry out. It was still off at that time. Um, once we had gone trick-or-treating and come back, it had been, I don't know, like a two-hour span because we ran and grabbed something to eat. And uh, so at that point, I plugged my phone in to charge because I wanted to see, you know, if it was going to work at all. The screen was completely black. I it, it acted like it was on, but like the, I couldn't see the screen at all. It was very scary because <laughs> I didn't know if I'd have a phone. And then all of a sudden, an hour after I turned it back on, it came back to life. Um, but the screen was still screwed up. Um, like I could only use the, the stylus, which I was like, whatever, at least it's working again. I'm afraid to turn it back off at this point though. Um, um, and here we are, it's Sunday, and my phone works completely 100% fine. Knock on some wood grain here. I'm not really sure how or why. I'm not gonna ask questions. It's like a freaking miracle. Um, lesson of the story is keep your phone away from liquid, and if you do drop it in liquid, uh, personally, I think you should keep it upright where all the liquid would have went up in it because you want it to come out of it. Um, silica gel packets from shoes or any other pa weird packaging you get them from, save them. I actually got a lot of them from my second job the other night. I like I was collecting them in my back pocket because they were just going to go in the garbage anyway. Um, and so I brought them home and my husband's like, what are we going to do with these? I said, in the event that this ever happens again, which clearly is not a plan, uh, now we have a bunch of these. Um, 
and yeah, to, to turn your phone off immediately. I think all those things in conjunction with each other definitely helped me. So thank God for that. Um, so anyway, so that was like Tuesday. Um, and then Wednesday, what happened all Wednesday? Did anything happen all Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday, my boss's boss decided to surprise us at work. Well, not really surprise us. We knew he was coming on Tuesday, um, but there's just so much to do. And he like, instead of showing up first thing in the morning like normal, he decided to wait till like 11.30, which was really stressful because we were just waiting on the edge of our seats for him to show. Kind of like when a corporate visit, visits your job. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Um, so we were all like, oh my God, like when is he gonna get here? Um, so that was super stressful. And then on Thursday, I was on the way home. Well, I was on the way to go pick up my son from daycare because my husband, once again, was working some stupid shift. He, he got off on Thursday morning at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. and then he went back in at 1 in the afternoon and he was working till 8.30. <sighs> retail during the holidays um so he uh, was at work so yeah I had to leave and go get my son normally Kevin gets Caden from daycare and I drop him off in the morning um but so yeah I was on the way to get him and I was at a light at an intersection and I was about to make a left turn waiting for my green arrow I was the first one in line and so I got the green arrow and I started to go and out from nowhere, a car from the left, from my left, decided, I guess they decided they wanted to go straight and run a red light. And they ran it and I hit them. And I hit them with the front of my vehicle. I hit their passenger side. Um, I was really shaken up because I've never been in like an actual car accident before. I've rear-ended somebody because I wasn't paying attention when I first got my driver's license. I was at a red light and... They started going and I looked over at a police officer who had another accident happening because it was like raining that day. And when I looked back over, the lady had put her brakes on and I didn't realize and I slid into her. I was going maybe like 12 miles per hour. So there was no damage to either of our vehicles. So for that, it was not a big deal. Um, but so yeah, that was the first car accident I've ever been in. I was very shaken up. Like I, you could probably hear it in my voice. I was very scared and just nervous. I didn't know what the front end of my vehicle looked at like and as you guys know like money is a struggle right now so I'm thinking oh my god like this is the last thing we need I need my vehicle I need to get to my jobs I need to be able to you know what I mean like provide for my family I, like all this stuff kept racing through my head I had no idea who was driving the other car man woman young old I had no idea I didn't know if they had any passengers because everything just happened so quick so of course I called 911 um, and I'm sure they did as well. I don't know if anybody else did, but I reported it and they told me to go to the, cause I was literally in the middle of this intersection. They told me to drive to the nearest like safe parking lot, which was like a 7-Eleven right there. While the other person was facing another gas station. So they drove into that and we just kind of sat there waiting for the police to show up. waiting for this person to oops okay sorry just trying to park um so yeah anyway so I pulled into the 7-eleven I kind of backed in because I wanted to see the front end of my car plus I've never been in an accident before so I don't know if the police would need to look at it or anything um and so I wasn't hurt like I just really shaken up like nothing happened to me like my airbag didn't deploy or anything like that um <clears throat> i'm just hoping this guy is not coming to the car beside me okay good um so i was sitting there so as soon as i hung up with the police i of course called my husband because he needed to go get my son because it was like five o'clock the daycare closes at 5 30 and i still had to wait for like the police and the exchange of information and all that stuff so i had to call him and tell him and then of course he like was panicking and i'm like i'm okay just go get Caden, you know so he had to leave work to do that and as i was on the phone with him somebody pulls up in front of me and rolls down their window and they said i was behind you at the light i saw everything that happened do you want me to stay and be your witness and i'm like oh my god yes please um, because you know, it's otherwise my word against the other persons <clears throat> who are like across the street on the other side of the intersection at a different gas station. 
Um, and I could see their car from where I was and it was very smashed up, which I will post a picture if you guys care. If it doesn't like show, I don't even know what they look like or anything like that. I know it's a lady only cause I have the police information thing. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so she stayed to be my witness. I got out of the car and there was actually not much damage done to mine. It destroyed my license plate, completely ripped it off. At that point, I didn't even know where my license plate was. It took the whole like black frame that is attached to the front end of your vehicle because of where I live in Maryland, you have to have a front license plate. I know in a lot of other states, you don't have to, um, but in our state, you do have to have a front license plate. So <laughs> it was gone. Um, and the whole front end, like part of my bumper is plastic. And so the whole front end of that was like very like scraped up. Um, and where my grill is, where like the emblem for my car is, it's like cracked cause it's plastic. Um, but other than that, there was like no, like you don't like look and glance at my vehicle and think, oh, that person was in a car accident. Um, so uh, yeah. So thank God for that. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just trying to see what's going on here. Um, so anyway, uh, then I started panicking because ambulance and a fire truck showed up to the other person's vehicle and they took somebody away in an ambulance. Well, I've, I've learned after because I started freaking out. I thought it was a child in the car. And I was on the phone with my husband and I was like, oh my God, she had a child in the car. Like I just immediately thought of my son and like how I would be acting regardless of whose fault the accident was and who hit who. Like... If they had a child in the car, I just like immediately felt like shit. <clears throat> Sorry, I just ripped skin off my finger. Now I'm bleeding. Um, so he's like, he's like, don't worry about that. He's like, um, I'm sure they're okay. He's like, you just, you know, it wasn't your fault. You cannot blame yourself um, for anything because you know you didn't do it. Ooh. Um. So anyway, and needless to say, it was not a child. It was an elderly woman who went to the hospital out of precaution because she, um, her, she had some sore ribs. So that made me feel much better. I still felt crappy that someone got sent to the hospital, but the um, ambulance didn't have their lights on or any sirens or anything like that. So there, you know, there was that at least going for me. So. Anyways, the person basically told the police that they have no idea if they had a green light or a red light. They don't know where I was coming from or where I was going. And so they basically put them, the police listed them as the at-fault driver. Um, so we're just kind of waiting for insurance to see, you know. Um, I'm driving my car, so it's clearly not damaged. I don't think there's anything mechanically wrong with it, but I will have to have it looked at. Um, and my back was really sore the other day. As you guys know, I already have a bad back as it is. So I think just the impact, but I'm feeling not too bad right now. So knock on wood, it was just from like the impact and kind of like jerking. I was very tense cause I literally saw them as I hit them, you know? Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I'm actually about to run out of space on my phone. So this will probably be one clip by itself about how my week went. And then I will add the rest of the clips after this as far as the meal planning and meal prep go. Um, so thank you guys for listening. Sorry this is so long. I'm okay. I love you all and I'm glad to be back. So I'll talk to you guys later.